Okay, let's do this. We're taking a look at Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives, and there always seems to be mixed responses when I'm talking to fans about the series on this one. We welcome back Jason, who is not in the fifth installment, so what's the mixed response all about? Typically it's about Jason turning into a zombie, basically. Really, it is a different take on Jason compared to the previous films. In the last three of the original four, Jason was human. He used stealth along with crafty ways of killing you, a great slasher character. Then we have him return from the grave with a different ball of tricks. Now he's a zombie, he no longer runs, he just sort of paces in your general direction and somehow appears in front of you. He's unstoppable pretty much and he can take bullets and fire and you name it. So why'd they do this? Personally, I don't have much of a problem with the direction that they took. My problem is that I think they took it too far in the ones that followed. Like Manhattan, Jason X, and Jason Goes to Hell, just to mention a couple that put a black mark on the series. It's too bad they didn't go with some of their other ideas for the series. Part of the original script for Jason Lives was that it would allude to who his father was. This was never used in the movie, and if you're a fan and want to know more about it, you're in luck, because it was included in the novelization of this movie. They shot the whole film in 40 days, and it cost $3 million to make. They failed to reach $20 million in return for the first time in the series, and it reminds me of what I was talking about in A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 and A Nightmare on Elm Street 4, those reviews that I did. The second Nightmare on Elm Street movie took a different direction altogether, and the third movie suffered for it, despite it being brilliant, and the fourth movie raked in all the cash based in on number three. In this case, we have part five that did not include Jason, or the real one at least, and it was a complete spin, and maybe this is the reason for the low turnout for Jason Lives. Although I like this movie, it certainly isn't Dream Warriors. But enough chat for now, let's take a look at Friday the 13th part six, Jason Lives from 1986. It starts off with Tommy Jarvis driving to Jason's grave with his buddy Oz. Wasn't Tommy Jarvis like eight years old just about two years ago? Anyway, they arrive at his grave. Pretty stock setting. Cobwebs, creepy statues. Tommy can't leave well enough alone and starts digging away at Jason's grave. Man, if you just left him alone, the series would have been better off. Jason looks gross and Tommy stares at him while having a flashback of some kind. He snaps and then pulls a steel rod off a fence. Pretty weak fence, I guess. He stabs away at Jason. Lightning strikes Jason's pole and his eyes open. Pretty fresh, too, for a dead guy. Jason is back and leaps after Tommy. They battle and he gets away. Ozzy hits him with a shovel and then pow. I have no words. Jason looks badass. Tommy bolts and Jason dons the mask. And Jason lives. Tommy runs to the cop shop and I find this cop a little bit hard ass, but Tommy is a little off too. Tommy grabs a gun and they put him in the slammer for the night. They call him Junior, but really he looks like he's 28. A couple of counselors, one's actually the guy from that movie Ghost, are driving to camp and she hits the brakes. Jason is staring them down. It's awesome. They can't back up so they decide to scare him. Yeah, just watch. Jason's like, fuck that. The guy gets tough with a gun and confronts Jason, and Jason skewers him with the pole. Just awesome. The chick can't run or stand or anything for whatever reason. Jason ghosts her only to reappear and then pop. You gotta admit one thing, even if you're not a fan of this one, the kills are pretty good. Tommy mentions Jason to the sheriff's daughter and her friends. She kind of finds him cute, and that's your subplot for the movie. A little mini love story. The sheriff tells him he will be escorted to the edge of town. We meet the graveyard keeper or guy or whatever they're called. He's kind of a comical character in this. The kids arrive at Camp Forest Green, formerly Camp Crystal Lake. All the kids arrive at camp. This Friday movie, in addition with the prologue from the original, are actually the only two Friday movies where kids actually do show up at camp. There's a business paintball game going on. There's some angry dude swinging a machete and Jason rips it right out of his arm. Just awesome. Three more business execs get decapitated all at once. And oh my, the nerdy guy takes off. Here we see our first Jason stalk instead of running, I guess. 
Tommy tries to prove once again that Jason is out, but the caretaker covered the grave in the middle of the night, and he has no proof. A hilarious part is when Court is talking to the kids about natives. If you've seen this movie, you know exactly what I mean. It's fucking hilarious. The graveyard watchman is strolling through the bush while a couple are together kind of smooching. The old dude throws a bottle in the air. Jason grabs it and jams it into his neck. So I'm a little perplexed as to how he could scream with the bottle in his neck, but never mind. Jason sees one of the couple, and he heads off after them. They take off in a rush, but Jason stabs him on a bike. It's a cool two-in-one kill, but this is just the start of Jason appearing like a phantom for kills in the series. Court is with a girl, and he's getting it on. Despite this being a sex scene, there's no nudity, and it's actually the only Friday film that doesn't have nudity in it. I know, bummer. Jason pulls the power on the van. Court's girl is such a nag about him going to check, it's so annoying. Court actually has a smart idea of leaving, rarely found in a horror flick. Court takes off and his girl is whipping all over. Serves her right for being such a nag. Jason pulls her into the washroom. They struggle for a bit and then Jason plants her face right into the side of the van. Jason then knives Court. And there's no mark of her face on the side of the truck when it flips over. Anyway, Jason climbs out of the van. It's pretty epic actually. The sheriff gets a call about it and thinks it's Tommy trying to prove Jason is still alive. Megan is alone at the station. Man, she's hot. And gets a call from Tommy. He says he has a plan and Megan eagerly goes to pick him up. The police find the bodies of the paintball execs and are convinced that Tommy is going above and beyond. One of the counselors thinks she hears something outside. Jason pulls her out the window and pulls her head off. Man, the kills in this rock. Megan tells Tommy to hide his shitbox and jump in her car. They take off only to run into a roadblock. They read the license plates off to the sheriff, though her plates are in the back and she's driving backwards, so I don't quite get that. They get booked by her dad. Meanwhile, back at the camp, it's only Paul left at this point. The sheriff gets a call about Court being dead. Megan and Tommy are trying to convince him that the times just don't match up. Check this scene out with Jason following Paula in the window. I love that. Paula gets sliced, but Jason, as if that's not enough, tosses her through the window. Whatever that's about. Megan and Tommy cook up a plan to break out. It's a pretty complicated plan, being that it was just made with their eyes, but whatever. She grabs the deputy's gun, and they bust out. Tom and Meg head off to Crystal Lake. Another cool scene is where Jason breaks into the kid's cabin. He doesn't at any point look as though he's going to hurt any of the children, but, and when I saw this as a kid, I thought this meant that he wouldn't hurt a child, but he went after Tommy in part four, so I don't really know. Maybe he's selective. Sheriff Garris finds a bloody cabin. Jason takes a cop out with a throwing knife. I love Jason's kills in this. The second cop finds the little girl and confronts Jason, firing away to no avail. Jason crushes his head. The sheriff finds the little girl and runs all the kids into one cabin. Obviously putting them all in one easy to reach place for Jason makes the most sense. The sheriff runs into Jason and hits him with a shotgun blast. Then another. And another. And then fires away with a pistol. He has the sense enough to run. The sheriff is running through the forest and then hides from Jason. Megan is screaming in hysterics for her father. I think she did a great job in this movie. Everything played really well. The dad attacks Jason, beats him with a rock, and then gets broken in half. The kills in this have to rank up there in the series. Tommy takes the boat out into the middle of the lake while Megan is being attacked and Tommy calls out to him, it's me you wanted, remember? But I wasn't aware that Jason really had a grudge against him. Then Jason voluntarily walks into the water, sinking with every step. That kind of contradicts the whole Jason being afraid of water thing like in Freddy vs. Jason. But I mean, you get it. Tommy then puts gas on the lake and lights a ring of fire, which I doubt would actually work, but if it did, I don't get the point. Jason and Tommy struggle in the boat, Tommy desperately trying to get the chain around Jason's neck that is attached to the rock. Tommy gets the noose around him and they fall into the water. Jason grabs Tommy and drowns him. His body floats to the top and Megan dives in after him. Jason grabs her leg and she starts the boat motor, cutting Jason's neck. This is actually filmed in the director's pool, I have no idea why. Jason is done. Tommy gets some mouth to mouth from Megan. Who wouldn't want mouth to mouth from her? There is a big hooray that Tommy is alive and the film ends with Jason underwater, then opening his eye, ending Jason lives. So my take on this film is that it's entertaining. But it's not true to the Jason that we knew before this. I think it is much, much better than the sequels that followed, although you can see some of the problems starting in this one. His ability to just walk yet somehow beat you to your destination while you're running astounds me. I mean, why would you include that in this film? It's ridiculous. 
His strength was upped a little in this one, especially the part where he rips the guy's arm off getting the machete. But it's entertaining and it has some great kills. The plot was decent and the cast of characters was fair. It would have been interesting if they had just left Jason dead and came up with a new concept for the movie. Like I mentioned in, in the intro, there are parts of the novel which refer to a father. Imagine Jason's father returning to seek revenge, and he is a powerful villain just like Jason, only with a different look and style. It would even fit the story well, mother to son, to father, anyway just an idea. Some of the flack I've heard people give this film is that Jason is just too zombie like, but I have to argue that point a bit. So really what were they supposed to do? They killed him off in number 4, then they confirmed this by his non-inclusion at number 5, so really they just played it up a little, although I think the fact that it's a different feel is really the main complaint. All in all, it's not a bad movie, it's the best of the zombie Jason flicks for sure in my opinion. I give it a solid 6 out of 10. This is Pat for HMRG saying thanks for watching, sub for new updates, and take care. Bye bye.